So can you remember a few months ago when those Collector Series figure reviews were saying things such as it's an okay line but I wish it would sort of go back to how it used to be in 2007 and 2008 where we had a more variety of figure and not just 12 Doctors over and over again? Well, character options, bless them, they took that literally, didn't they? So today I'm going to be taking a look at the 10th Doctor in Tuxedo, a figure that we've literally been wanting since 2007. I'm guessing character options logic was, hey, it was popular then, therefore if we release it now, it will probably be just as popular, you know, much like those other things from 2007 that are still popular, such as Tamagotchis or going outside. But as you can see, we've got another 10th Doctor to the line. Why? Don't have a bloody clue, but it's here, so let's review the thing. As you can see, generally for the box, it's exactly the same to what we've seen before with the Collector Series line or whatever we've decided to call it this week. So as you can see at the top, we get the Doctor Who Classic logo for some reason, even though this is a new series figure. I don't understand character options marketing anymore, and to be quite frank, I don't particularly care either. Sides of this, we get the purpley diamond design, which in fact looks quite nice. Towards the side of this, we get 5.5 slash 14 centimeter scale collector series. At the bottom of this, we get the 10th Doctor in Tuxedo collector figure. And the figure is nicely displayed in the box along with its accessory, and the window also, of course, extends around to the side as well. The top and sides of the box pretty much contain exactly the same information as the front. And then the back of the box also contains pretty much exactly the same information with the Doctor Who logo, the title of the set at the top, an image of the prototype, as well as a write-up on the 10th Doctor 2005-2009, to as well as a little bit of a write-up on the Voyage of the Damned, which has also got the quote from the Voyage of the Damned at the bottom. So well done, you've got two things right in a row, that's great. But yeah, this is apparently from the Voyage of the Damned, as well as many other stories. And then, of course, at the very bottom of this, we get some company information, as per usual, as well as the now irrelevant Underground Toys logo, lurking around like a friend that you no longer want in life. So here's the 10th Doctor out of his box, and joking aside, it actually looks pretty nice. They've really gone for a nice costume for this one. Of course, it's one that we've all wanted for quite a long time now. It's made a number of appearances in Doctor Who, such as The Voyage of the Dam, The Age of Steel, The Lazarus Experiment. I do believe with this one, it's not particularly accurate to any ones I've seen in the stories, because I do think that they had slight variations between the different stories that they're in. For example, I think The Voyage of the Damned, he did have the tie undone quite a lot, and obviously with this figure, it is closed. So they've sort of gone with a average tuxedo Doctor, which to be quite honest at the moment with this line the last thing that I'm sort of worrying about is actual accuracy with them I just want decent figures on the market and not gonna lie this one does tend to be a little bit of a quality upstep compared to the previous figures that we've seen and something similar to that of what we've seen in the 13 Doctors box set as well having improvised paint apps on the face making it look slightly better Starting off with the costume, to be quite honest, there isn't really too much to talk about because it is pretty much your average tuxedo with a bit of black and white in there. There's not really much else about it. So as you can see over the top, we get the really nice design of the suit. This has been done rather well. It's rather plain, much like how a suit actually would be. Towards the sides, we get this really nice engraving. As you can see, replicating that of stitching. This goes under the armpits and we also have pockets on either side, as well as the addition of a button would be a slightly different paint app, making it look slightly more glossy. If not, it just looks a little bit glossier. I don't really know. We also get the lapels of the jacket as well, which once again, a little bit of a similar thing. I do think that these might be a slightly different paint app compared to that of the rest of the suit. They do tend to look a little bit glossier, making them stand out a little bit more. So as you can see, those have been nicely sculpted and does in fact go all the way around the suit as well. The suit has a very nice stitching line running all the way down along with the addition of some standard character options creasing. This has once again been rather nicely done and is slightly more prominent on the arms. As you can see there, we get a further piece of creasing down the sides as well as a few more stitching lines. To the cuffs of the jacket now, we also get the addition of a few buttons. These have been sculpted rather nicely. And then as per every single 10th Doctor figure, we do of course have the hand which has been sculpted to hold that of the sonic screwdriver. Once again with the thumb and the fingers individually sculpted. The opposite arm is exactly the same, once again with the detailing of the cuffs of the jacket, and then once again we have the hand. This has been sculpted in just your standard open palm position. To the middle of the figure now, we do get the suit shirt underneath. As you can see, this has been painted in a very nice and bright white colour, but if we do reflect it in the light, we do get this very nice engraved pattern, once again making a little bit sort of a tube or piping design. We get this sort of thick design running all the way down the middle, probably where the buttons would be. And then we also get this lighter design, as you can see there, which has been very nicely done, replicating that of a suit shirt very well, as well as the detailing and embroidery on that. 
And then, of course, in the very middle, we get the bow tie. This has been very nicely sculpted. We get the bow in the very middle, along with a few creases running from this. Overall, it's been very nicely done, and I do like the way that it protrudes from the sculpt. However, once again, much like a lot of the figures, the paint apps have let it down. As you can see specifically on this side here, and sort of slightly towards the top, we do, in fact, get a very big paint bleed, as you can see there, of the black running over. You can't really see too much on camera, because it does all tend to fade into one, but we do have quite a big paint bleed there, which is a little bit annoying. Can't really recognise it from sort of far away, but if you get up close, it is there. It would be nice if this was a little bit sharper. Down to the bottom of the figure now, in true cat option style, we do get a bit of a sculpt reuse here. Once again, this is the type of sculpt reuse that I don't, in fact, mind too much because it's not really too noticeable, and to be quite honest, it passes very well, so I don't really particularly mind too much. It's when they use a sculpt that is clearly not meant to be for that figure, such as the entirety of the 3.75 line, pretty much. So as you can see, this is your average 10th Doctor trouser, which has just got all of the detail taken away. The trousers have been done in sort of just a black colour, much like the rest of the suit, and all of the pinstripes has now been detracted. We do of course have the sculpting which once again does replicate that of a little bit of creasing, more so towards the bottom. I'm guessing that if this was in fact a completely new sculpt, they will probably be a little bit more slimmer and a little bit more like how suit trousers would actually be and less baggy towards the bottom as so. But as I say, in character options and their dire needs at the moment of pretty much having this dying line sort of slightly resurrected, I don't particularly mind too much. I'm just sort of grateful that we have something new. To finish up with clothes, at the very bottom we do get the Vans, Converse, whatever they are, once again, these are exactly the same to any other 10th Doctor figure. However, this time all the blues or reds have in fact been detracted away and this time replaced with a black. Now, I do believe that this is accurate to what is seen in the show. To be quite honest, I couldn't be bothered to check. But once again, these have in fact been rather nicely painted. Along the bottom, we get the white sole along with a red line replicating that of the sole piece. And towards the middle, we get sort of a black glossy design of paint, which has been very nicely applied to the figure. And then over the top of this, we do get the white shoeless design. Once again, this is a little bit different compared to either shoe. We do get a little bit more of an overlap to Towards this side. However, those have been rather nicely painted for the scale, and I don't particularly mind them too much. So, taking a look at the head sculpt now, I think that this is a brand new one. It's a little bit hard to tell, and to be quite honest, I've not really checked completely with the others. It does have a few features that is a little bit similar to the previous releases, but that said, it is sort of meant to because it is, of course, exactly the same person. However, the paint apps on this one are the main feature that I think are the main improvement because, similar with the 13 Doctors set, the skin tone does tend to be completely different to previous releases. It tends to be a lot paler a lot more like an actual human being and that is something that very much the 13 Doctors set did in fact sort of feature itself around this new idea of improved paint apps and it's definitely something that I really want to see on the upcoming 12th Doctor figure. I think that generally overall it looks quite nice. I like the detailing on the eyes and I think that the pupil and the iris have been very well detailed. The eyebrows have been quite nicely done as well and I do like the way that the lips have been painted. They're not too bright, not too dark and generally overall the skin tone is very nice and probably one of the best skin tones that we've ever seen on a 10th Doctor figure. However, as you can see unfortunately on mine we did tend to have a little bit of a dot on the nose making it look like he does in fact have a nose piercing. I was hoping that this would just scratch off. Couldn't in fact see it in the box and I did in fact buy it. I don't Going to the side of the head sculpt now, as you can see, they've sort of gone with it slightly less spiky compared to that of the end of time figure. I know a lot of people have been desperately wanting to see a spiky headed version without the glasses because it is a sculpt that we've seen quite a lot of times now that hasn't in fact just been the normal head. And this is probably the closest that we're ever going to get to that. But with this one, they've sort of gone with a more relaxed look. As you can see, sort of the spiky quiffy piece at the front is now sort of a little bit more flat and a little bit more stumpy compared to that of the previous figures that we've seen. And it's sort of a little bit of a middle ground between that of the original sculpt and the new ones. So the hair has also been rather nicely sculpted. As you can see, we get a few improved paint apps in there compared to the original version. We do have a lot of different highlights in there, as well as a few little individual strands as well. More so towards the front, as you can see. Once again, we get that middle ground between sort of the end of time version as well as the original version. So we get a few more flicks and things towards the front, as well as this strand coming down the face. Once again, I do believe this is in fact all one sculpt now compared to that of the end of time version, which did tend to be two sculpts, which I'm guessing is something that they probably wanted to rectify because it would be a little bit cheaper. Once again, we do get a few strands in there that have been highlighted with a lighter brown paint app, bringing out the details very well. The one and only accessory that comes with this figure is, of course, the Sonnet screwdriver. But stop right there, this is a brand new sculpt. I know, right? This is the first ever new sculpt of the 10th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver that I do believe we've in fact ever seen since the very beginning of the line. So yeah, well done character, you've actually put effort into an accessory and it's a very nice addition to be honest. So at the top we get the blue emitter, along with the different sections nicely detailed, along with the button section in the very middle, along with the silver section and the black tip at the very bottom. And I really like the addition of the button as well, which in fact protrudes from the sculpt. And there you go, because I'm nice like that, have a little bit of a comparison with the original version, which as you can see, 
is pretty much exactly the same size to this one, but overall the new one has far superior details. Just to give you a little bit of a comparison also to the previous 10th Doctor figures that have been released, this is just a handful of the many different variations that they've done. As you can see, you can definitely see the slight difference in pen apps. Once again, they've gone with a more accurate design, which is very nice. And overall, it's just very nice to add this costume to the collection, as I know it's been one that's been very much desired for a very long time. And overall, I think a lot of different improvements have been made, and it is a quite a nice figure. And scale-wise, which at the moment is a massive topical question with Doctor Who figures, it is in fact pretty much in scale with the previous 10th Doctor figures that they've released, which is brilliant, it makes sense. Unlike the upcoming 12th Doctor figure, which even though the original was quite tall and a little bit out of scale, the next one is even bigger and tots up to about 6 inches, which doesn't really make sense, but hey, we'll get to that when it comes around. And then finally, something that I never normally do with these figures, because to be quite honest, we all know the drill of them by now, especially 10th Doctor ones. However, with this figure, we do in fact have a brand new and revised sculpt. As you can see, we now have, for the first time ever, board joints on the arms, which is absolutely great, something that the line has sort of adapted to over the years. Some figures have them, some figures don't. So it is nice to finally have a figure like this, and it means that we can now do that scene with the host, where they sort of wrap their arms around and go like that, which is something that a lot of people, myself included, have been wanting to do for a very long time, because we are very sad human beings. However, it does mean we also have the upper arm articulation, which is something that previous 10th Doctor figures, in fact, the only figure that I do believe in the line that has never had that upper arm articulation. However, because they used the old sculpt, we don't in fact have the thigh ones. So this is a little bit of a mix between the two. And so overall for this figure, it is a little bit of an odd one because there's no hiding the fact that this figure is extremely outdated. It would have had a lot more interest if it was released back when it was meant to in 2007, 2008, 2009. However, now because they've clearly released it again it is quite obvious that what they're trying to do is get a little bit more popularity back into the line again but to be quite honest what they need to do is carry on the quality if they want popularity back in the line i want similar stuff to this figure because compared to that the previous collector series figures that they've released such as the 12th doctor that to be quite honest i found the original 12th doctor figure incredibly boring it doesn't really have the features or anything like that and the pen apps are a little bit of a letdown this figure does in fact show a little bit more of that revival going back to what the figure line used to be the improved pen apps making it look very much like something from the 13 Doctors so I just want to see this continued and to be quite honest I will admit this figure has seen me sort of have a little bit more hope for the upcoming 12th Doctor figure as well and I'm just hoping that that quality continues in the upcoming figures. I can see this figure getting a little bit of interest from people that used to collect the line and no longer do because of course it is a figure that everybody wanted at the time and to be honest if you're a David Tennant fan it's one of those ones that you'll probably want in the collection because it is nothing really too special it's just a nice little thing to look at. So thanks for watching this review, if you enjoyed it please do give it a big like, please subscribe if you're not already, if any questions please do leave them below and I'll be sure to answer them at some point in the near future. Thanks again for watching, I shall see you all next time, so thanks for watching and bye for now.